Hey everyone, Dave Greco here and welcome back to the channel once again. So on this video today, I really want to dive into clothing, folds, and kind of how to add different outfits and to your characters that you might be coming up with. So I want to show off a brand new OC we made on the stream recently. Her name is Vale. She's pretty cool. I'm really, really excited about her. And we prepped up a brand new piece just to showcase for this tutorial. So I'm not going to waste a ton of time. We're going to dive right in. Before we get started though, this video is sponsored by Wacom. They're a fantastic, fantastic tablet company. Um, I use a 27 inch Cintiq right here. Um, I love it. I'm going to have a ton of links down below. If you are looking to kind of, you know, maybe upgrade your hardware at home or looking to get into digital painting, let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. So I have the main piece of Veil right here with two type of shirt references that we're going to be using and trying to learn from. I'm going to try to explain my process and how I start to apply clothing to characters while addressing some of the folds in the process. Uh, one of the things I usually like to do when I have to do any type of outfit, you know, I usually wouldn't go as detailed as we did for her body on this one, but I usually would draw a pretty kind of bare bones body, um, either like nude or like a very tight clothing on, so I can then drape the clothing on top of it and it still matches the anatomy properly. So I figured for the first one, we're going to do this t-shirt, which uh, this one right here on the top right. And we're going to try to analyze and look at a couple things that I look for when trying to bring that over to a character. So let me grab a color here so we can see a little bit easier, maybe this red. And anytime I'm drawing any type of armor, outfit, clothing, uh, I'm usually looking at the silhouette first and then breaking it down into the smaller shapes. So one thing we're going to be looking at right here of the, some shapes that I really like is something like the sleeves here. Oh, I think I have it on um, black and white. This is stuff right here, right? These kind of silhouette shapes. And you don't always have to follow the reference. This has this kind of like, kind of folds out like that. You know, I might keep it simpler and have to do something like that, right? And so we're going to try to create that on this one. And what I usually do is I kind of create its own layer set right here. I'll try to zoom in for you where it says group two. We can just name this to like shirt. I'll have one layer right here and I'll usually start pretty, uh, pretty muted. So it may be like, we'll just pretty close to black. And right on top of it, we're kind of laying the shirt down. I like to use you know, pretty kind of swoopy lines. I want to keep my hand moving pretty quick, right? And I'm trying to capture a lot of these same shapes up here. And I want to think that, like, you know, I always have to think about that. Gravity's still pulling a lot of this fabric and everything down, right? So it might sit on the shoulder and come down, even though I'm pressing her arm in, but it may still kind of fan out like this. And then we can also look at some cool folds that are happening right here. And we can just do a couple lines that kind of match up with where the armpit and the arm are meeting. And maybe a couple little, it's just like the hints of the crease that's happening underneath as the fabric is pressed in. And then we can just try to keep it a little loose and try to kind of mimic some of these other ones. Do the same thing on the other side. And we'll just bring this over. It's gonna sit on the shoulder and then kind of fall off. And then we'll kind of just give this little gap right there. And then maybe just maybe one little extra fold of where it's creasing in. There's lots of little minor folds you can see in the shirt right here. We don't need to dive into a lot of those. I say for now, let's keep it simple. And I think everyone can try to tie a bunch of this into their own work. And I think it'll uh, help quite a bit. And so basically what I do, and I've been doing this a lot lately, is I'll go down here, make a new layer. And I'll I take this layer and I'll drop it beneath the other one. So it's gonna sit underneath this outline. And let's just grab a color. Doesn't matter what, we'll just grab a uh, pure solid. And I'm just gonna do a very, very flat color underneath. And so that outline's gonna sit right on top. 
And so I definitely encourage you to try this with any of your pieces. We're looking at uh, simple ways to get it in, and then we'll take a look at kind of rendering the folds out and the fabric and everything as we go. So we have this kind of, you know, it's a little, a little messy from the outlines, everything, but at least it's showing like a quick way where we now have the idea that she has some type of t-shirt on. You know, we might have to change some things up. I can make another layer that sits. I do make a lot of layers, so heads up on that. And we can put some shadow areas underneath right here where this might be sitting on just to kind of flesh it out here. And so basically we can do, say this was the line layer right here. We'll name it so we remember. If you want to spend the time, which sometimes I might a little bit, you can go up and just grab like an eraser and you can kind of clean it up a little bit. All depends what you want to do. And you can, you know, slow down at the beginning if you need. So you don't have this kind of messiness, but I think the flowing lines at first, like quick movements with your hand over the tablet is a, uh, is a good idea. There you go. And one thing I do sometimes is you could even say if you, you know, control select this layer, so you're controlling all those lines. I still have it selected and made a new layer because that's what we do. And I'm going to grab, so it's not so just black, it's kind of lighter red. And I'm just going to kind of go over this outline just so it's not straight black where it gets too contrasty right there. And so what we want to do right now is I want to just dive in a little bit and show you kind of how I tackle what is really going to happen with, with folds and how we can approach uh, painting it in here. Like anything, anything that you paint, and I, I always recommend using reference. I think re reference is fantastic. Almost all professionals use it, so don't shy away from it. It's a fantastic tool. But the biggest thing is understanding what you're actually painting. I'm sorry some of these pictures aren't like the highest res, so they're kind of pixely, but... You know, for up here, what we're looking at with her shirt is these parts of the fabric here are coming outward, right? Like these, this part right here is pressed against the skin and these parts, they like buckle out, right? Like little mountains. And so that's pretty much what's going on. And we can think of this one right here. Oh, I still have that selection. As that crease that's really happening coming from the armpit area. And so if we had like a, bit, a little bit of a lighter color and kind of see what's happening here, we can just slowly blend some of that up. And like I said, reference is always there just to kind of help give you little bits of information. Don't feel like you're stuck having to copy what the reference is doing or any of that, right? And so right here we have another, right? It, this is going to be like another little almost like a little mountain range. It's all pressed in and these parts right here are coming towards you. So we can put more kind of highlight on the top. And then we can slowly bring this down. Probably it's gonna have a bunch more shadow down here. And we can even take this edge and just kind of blend it so it's not, doesn't have such a harsh line along it. And then you can also see some of this highlight. Say it's almost like the light, especially from the reference, is coming more from this direction. And so it's going to go past over this like breast area onto this sleeve. And so we'll get like a little bit more. We'll just do a slight blending. If you guys are curious on how I blend, I do have a blending video. It's pretty simple. It's a lot of, you know, pressing real lightly and eye dropping like a maniac. So that is pretty much what we're doing. You know, it depends how much you want. You can really dive into more and more folds on what you want to do. 
but this is a very, very basic way on how I might approach it. And then you can kind of keep going on top and clean up over some of this line work. We can go back in here and really get this back part of the sleeve that's going around the other side of the arm right there. And then we can maybe have a little more, I like having like a little bit more contrast and get a little darker and tighter on these like little tight crease areas that are probably going to happen right here. And then we'll just have, you know, it's going to have, this is going to be hanging down. And so we'll get some shadow right here. Maybe a tiny bit on this side. We can kind of fix this top part just so it doesn't interfere too much with the design that was happening underneath. And it's a lot of just going around your piece and slowly smoothing out and getting little parts of it to work that you want it to. Work the way that you want it to, I should say. Just like that. And so we can look over here. There's not a lot of detail. Some of these references were a little tough to find. Sorry, I think there's still like follow alerts come through on this recording. Since I use uh, OBS to record these, so I apologize. But really the same thing. We're just kind of tucking this back underneath. You're gonna have this high contrast, really kind of deep pocket that's fitting underneath here. And then we're just doing a slight blend around the edges because you have to think that this fold is coming from the top and then going our back around being tucked into that kind of armpit area. That's what all this is doing. We can come back here and grab some of these highlights if we want and do the same thing. It's like we're creating this little ledge that's created. And like another one right here. I don't think you have to get super complicated. You can see a lot of crazy folds and we're gonna dive into this kind of more complicated wrap and see how we can break that down into just some simpler shapes and knowing that like we don't have to go too crazy, but we can still sell the idea of it. We still wanna incorporate the look and feel of it, but you know, match our style and design that we're doing with, our, with the piece already. And so we're just slowly blending this out on the side. Over this shadow right here. And we can probably just do the same thing. A little bit more of that highlight color. Like this is a pretty um, simple, you know, colors for this. It's just like almost like a straight orange and it doesn't have too much complication, but this is just to show everybody it's more about the thought process of going through it, right? And analyzing what you're doing and what you need to do to get the result that you want. And that's pretty much what this is. It's not like this is how you do these type of folds. It's this type of V shape with a shadow right here. But you have to kind of know what you're looking for. And same thing with this, you know, back of the sleeve right here. You know, you can have some like light coming from the backside, all that type of stuff. And then we're just taking some of the same shadow color and we're going to go kind of subtle with it, right? You could really have like a ton of different folds and how it's coming down. But for the purpose of this, I think we could keep it, keep it pretty simple. It's almost like she's got a jumpsuit on. And this is, we're just using the DG main. DJ Main is uh, it's giving us life right now. So I should have a link to my Gumroad where you can find my brush pack right down below. I use this brush a lot. I use it for, for rendering, for line work. It is used for a great many, many things. So it's pretty simple right here. And we're just going around. Let's take a look here. So, you know, you could do these kind of folds that fan out. And 
we're really kind of looking at where these pieces tuck back underneath. You know, a great thing to do is I've actually used to do a lot of these. It's kind of like fold studies. And you can do that at home. You can grab like towels and blankets, um, create interesting folded shapes. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world to paint, but there is a lot of like, once you see, once you paint folds enough, you'll be able to recognize all those kind of like reoccurring shapes that happen. And then when you, when it comes to sketching later, you'll be able to identify it and then kind of recreate those shapes without even thinking about it. And it'll sell the idea of folds. And if we ever get back to like an actual functioning, you know, um, figure drawing classes, some of my favorite type of figure drawing is actually like fully clothed models with like costumes, because I think drawing that is super, super important, especially since most of the characters that we, we draw for everything actually have clothes on. So. Well, this sounds great for anatomy practice and getting your anatomy down, but it's still great to uh, draw that stuff. Anyway, so this is a quick version. You know, you can spend a long time. You know, there's still, there still needs to be like more folds figured out down here, especially like under our chest and going on our stomach. Uh, but I wanted to spend a little bit more time more on this type of wrap right here. So it gets a little bit uh, a little bit more complicated, I think. And so I want to do the kind of the same exercise. Let's get rid of this one. All right, so we have this all on its own layer set, so we can turn that off and we're gonna create a new one. And I'm basically gonna go through the exact same process that we did before. But maybe we can spend a little bit more time, make this one a little fancier. There's a lot of cool things I like about this one. This one actually matches a little bit more of the design I was thinking uh, for the character as well. Like I love this type of this neck thing, this like neck piece of fabric. So we're just gonna be kind of painting and bringing all this down. I want this way up in the neck like this is, and there's like this little bend that comes out. That's why I like having that reference up for you guys to see while I'm painting this. So you kind of see what I'm looking at for the shapes and what I'm, I might be changing about it. So up here, it has this, this big part that comes down. It looks like it kind of comes down under, which we could try. We'll see if it works. And this is gonna come up pretty much the shoulder area. You always have to adapt it to how your pose and your piece is, because it's gonna be a little bit different. And then this actually comes down all the way forward. And then comes around here. I like being pretty scribbly with the stuff when we start. I think you don't have to make it pretty to start, right? And then this actually, it's almost like it comes down at an angle, which is pretty cool. And we'll kind of create that lip right there. And these are actually pretty pretty tight on with like a little bit right there. And then let's bring this down and it looks like this kind of comes down this way. And these right here. Looks like maybe a couple of these folds that are happening here. And then this can be pretty simple. I actually like to have a couple of like kind of what looks like bends on the inside of the elbow. And we'll leave this arm exposed. Okay. So we have something here. Let's dive into coloring underneath it like we did before. And we, keep, we can keep this version pretty gray as well. Maybe with a tinge of blue. This just always feels like a good way for me to 
match the anatomy and the pose if I'm not diving into the outfit super quick. Sometimes the characters are designed with the outfit on, um, but I think that this can still apply for you as far as your sketch is concerned. But sometimes, like we had done that other design that I showed earlier for her, and yeah, I like it, but I think some parts could be approved and we can kind of reevaluate. And so this is kind of a good process as well. I like this kind of darker piece over the arm. All right, we kind of have like a basis here. There's kind of a weird tangent happening with the edge of this and the arm. So that's something we're gonna have to address. And so what I might do is actually kind of erase this under part and some of this line. And I kind of want to go back up and see if I can just tweak it a little bit. I don't want it to super mess with it where it looks odd. Like I said, you can always twist and move this stuff around. Maybe we actually have a little bit of this sleeve that comes down. It's, you know, it's always worth just trying these things. Just like a real solid color. You know, maybe it works, maybe it does, maybe, maybe a tiny bit. We could try, who knows. We can play with it or I'm getting distracted. We're just bringing that into down here on that arm. Who knows? Either way, same process as before. So I'm gonna work on top of everything now. We're gonna go back to DG Main. And this is honestly just gonna be just a kind of a grayscale piece on it. So this big part flap on the front, I'm gonna paint kind of right over the line. I'm always not worried about like losing too much line drawing. There's a lot of back and forth, like I'll grab a little bit of it, paint some in. You know, that, that the line stage for me is not like a one and done thing. So see, I'm kind of like pressing and coloring on this inside to kind of crisp up that line. And that's kind of what we're shooting for. And so basically you're looking at these like creases and folds in the inside of them. And those are going to be your really, really dark areas. And then we're slowly going to blend it out because as, as this piece, this is almost like one of those little, those little hills, those little mountains that's coming out, right? It's really bunches of the fabric that have folded up outwards towards you. And so you want like this little gradual shading because it's not like, you know, going straight back like a 90 degree angle. It's slightly coming towards you. So there needs to be a little bit of a gradu graduation of it, right? And we're grabbing a lot of these little things and we're just slowly, we're just taking our time and we're just gonna blend all this stuff just like this. And then we can push back the back of this step back here. Let's see, we're already getting the kind of beginning of what we're shooting for. We're matching that this is a little bit darker in here. This is getting some more shadow on the inside. You know, and this is a great way to do it even when you're doing concepts or anything. I think you can take like a bunch of different outfits you can cobble pieces together. Like maybe I really like the collar and this top kind of band, right? That's coming up. And then maybe down below it was something that's doesn't work as well. And we can fix that and do something else with it. But I think you just want to go around and find these little valleys and these little hills. They're kind of showing where areas are creasing. And then kind of tackle them that way. You know, you always have to take into account where your light is 
where your shadows are. But you can keep you can keep these stages pretty simple. I say I'm just pressed real lightly. Sorry, Photoshop's kind of going crazy on me. And they're just pushing that all around. And so there's actually a slight fold on this inside right here. If I paint over it, you can kind of see it a little bit more. So it's doing a little bit more like that. And I think that adds a little bit of interest to it. So we can kind of do the same thing. Take a little bit of that darker value, push it in the middle, and then these little parts are just kind of buckling towards you a little bit. And we're just going to paint those in. There we go. It's almost like a crazed Jedi outfit. It's very Jedi-esque. And we're just doing the same thing again. This one's a pretty tight crease right here. And then the light is actually coming up right to it. So it gets a little sharper on that one, which is pretty cool. When you can find those little spaces where you have a nice little tight crease like that, I like that. You know, this one has like a little bit of larger shadow area. I just think it's important on reference. And then I'll shoot my own reference for a lot of these too. I've had a lot of pieces recently where I wanted the shape design for the folds to feel right for the pose that I had on certain characters. And I wanted some more loose fitting shirts and everything like that. And so it's really good, especially if like your arms twisted and you have a shirt on, how are those folds working? is super important for you to figure out. Let's bring, make sure this looks like it goes way up high enough. So like this, I, I stay pretty zoomed out while I work. If anyone's seen you know, my other videos, I, I usually stay pretty zoomed out. I like to kind of see this whole thing and kind of know what I'm working with. And we're just going up and we're, we're cleaning up, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And we'll do the same thing over here. I usually try to kind of avoid having such thick like lines along the borders of so many things. It's just going to flatten the image out a ton. You know, sometimes it works, you know, you can have a bit of stylization there where you make it work. But you know, it doesn't. Same thing as before, a little bit of gradual shadow there. And we can go back and then we're gonna pick up these highlights even more too, right? So we really wanna bring these parts out even more. And we're gonna have this kind of come around and this is actually a part that kind of goes back more into shadow. If you really kind of look at these things, because this top part, and then it kind of comes over this way. Same with here. You can take a look at all these little areas. We're making decisions based on everything around it. That's why we're constantly want to be bouncing around the piece. Moving around the piece is super, super important. I'm not getting bogged down on spending 20 minutes just on our collar before we tackle anything else, right? We want to know where we want the viewer's eyes to be focused on. It's the shape design the way we want it. There's so many little things that go into this. Then maybe some of the lessons that we learned before, maybe it's not in that reference that we saw from this one, but it was from the reference of the other one. We saw how certain folds affect inside the armpit. So we're learning with every piece that we do. So maybe we can put that crease in here with a little bit of these 
little mounds of fabric that bunch up, right? And so we're taking small things that we that we learn from every single piece on what makes a fold work right and look okay. We can apply it to different ones. We can do the same thing on this one. It doesn't really match this one, but we can put that extra little fold that we saw in the last one. Same thing, we'll build up that little peak right here. And then we're just blending it out. And honestly, well, if I don't put random colors anywhere, this is the process. This is the process that I do for outfits and clothing for my characters. You know, sometimes I would analyze, I could spend a little bit more time analyzing the, uh, the silhouette for what, you know, to make it work or not work. Uh, I think this outfit for this pose could be kind of strange. Looks like she's got body parts collapsing on herself, but I think there's some pretty cool ideas that are happening. And even looking at the shadow, how the shadow kind of comes down right there is actually pretty cool. Maybe we can bring some of that into her. Who knows? Want this to curve a little bit down a little bit more. Like I said, you're always tweaking. You're always moving this stuff around. I'm going to collapse all these layers. You can take all these layers and control E. I just want to erase that part right there. And then even with this part, we can kind of mold this shape a little bit more. You know, I think the silhouette of shapes and everything is so, so nice. And so really feel like, you know, you are the one that's totally in control of your painting. You're just grabbing little bits of information from the reference, how to tackle them into folds. How do they work? You know, applying it in. And that's it. I'm going to spend a little bit more time. I'm going to spend a little bit more time kind of rendering this. And then I'll pop over and kind of show you all a quick final on how it all went. Since, you know, I'll probably spend like another half an hour kind of going through this and make it nice and pretty for everybody. It's just, I'm just gonna use this exact same process from top to bottom. All right, so let me uh, cut back to about 30 more minutes of work and let's uh, check out the ending. All right, here we go. I hope everyone likes the final. This is just using a bunch of information uh, from the reference, kind of riffing on it and see what I can do, what I can push, maybe get a little bit more lighting on it to kind of bring it to life a little bit more. But yeah, this is the process I use for, you know, applying folds and clothing to a ton of my characters. It's really just creating that outline layer, you know, a solid layer, you know, color underneath it, and then doing some light rendering on top to kind of figure out where those folds might be. Try it with your own work. I really think you're going to see a difference if you can start applying that in there. So everybody, thank you so much as always. And thank you, Vale, for participating in this study. And like every time, I'll see you in the next one.